Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire. You can like us on Facebook. You can uh, go to YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes, J Rev Radio, Voluntary Virtues Network. We are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. And I am. And what? Pro moonshine, dude. Pro moonshine? <laughs> That's more important than coffee sometimes, man. I'm just, just, just saying. No, no, just coffee, saying. Coffee is a lot more important than moonshine. I guess you're right. Whatever. I'm sorry for our We live on vibe. coffee, I'm, man. Like, you have a I live on moonshine. You. When you're not looking, man. That's true. You do you do drink a lot. It of makes moonshine. the voices and the pain go away. That's true. Oh, anywho, I'm Ron Mathias. <laughs> I'm Joel Valenzuela. <laughs> and I'm Shire Dude. And Who's Shire Dude? This guy. This guy oh. right here. And our guest today is none other than Darren Tapp. He is the hey, co- Can you say that again? Can you say our guest today? I can't be on a radio show where you say today. <laughs> 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 our guest today is uh, Darren Tapp, <laughs> co-host of Neocash Radio. It is a cryptocurrency and finance podcast based in Manchester, New Hampshire. He, is, he has a PhD from Purdue University in mathematics, taught several classes in mathematics, uh, been involved in startups, and has been involved heavily with Bitcoin since 2011, which is like 10 years ago in, in the world of Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's a pretty good dancer, and he can <laughs> sing in German. Yeah. There you go. So that's a, that's go. a very that's good start. That's, that's even a better of, selling point. I've got a lot of talents. I know. Is this turning? <laughs> is this turning into a Tinder profile? He looks likes <laughs> long walks on the beach. Dude, you should talk, Mister. It is Tinderella right Holding here. Holding hands in the moonlight. Yeah. I like the beaches a little bit warmer. Like the oceans a little yeah. bit warmer than they are around here. But that's okay. <laughs> that works. I and get by. So, anyways, I want to know what's going on with Bitcoin, man. It's it's well, dropping it's, like it's, a rock. It's, I'm, I'm scared for my life. Should I just sell? What, what's going on? Dropping. Well, if I was in a different financial position, I might be more likely to buy right now because. Uh, well, when is it a bad time to buy Bitcoin? When it's high. It's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and well, again, Duh, this guy's a ma- this guy does math for a living and stuff. <laughs> it's like I think he knows. <laughs> so it's, big, it's it's going down, and so that's when you want to buy because the, with the same amount of money, you get more Bitcoin. So if you had a choice of buying when it's cheaper then that's probably a good move. If you were going to buy anyway, that's, it's better to buy more and get more. So that, that's just a fact. Um, why is it going down? Yeah. I really can't say. I do know that there are a lot of things that are happening in the world of Bitcoin that might cause some selling pressure. For example, the Ethereum sale is almost wrapped up. Well, it's, uh, it's at, what, 15 hours left or something? Hmm. And Well, not yet, but 15 days maybe. But it's almost wrapping up. So the question is, are they going to sell uh, to get uh, f- uh, f- a g- regular government currency to cover some of their costs and all that. So that's one question. Another question is, uh, well, basically what happens is what, what's treated as good news when uh, certain companies accept Bitcoin. Uh, but when, like, Dell accepts Bitcoin, they usually convert it to dollars right away. So that that could be putting selling pressure on Bitcoin uh, that could cause the price to go down. So what you're saying basically is that good news can sort of look like bad news in the short term. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, uh, yeah, but I mean, the, but the fact that Dell accepts it makes the bitcoins you have have more utility. If you want to cash them out for a computer, there's one less step you need to do. Uh, what I think is going to be the big deal is when Overstock really starts give you know they're giving their bonuses to employees if they actually start paying employees and start paying. Uh, suppliers in Bitcoin, and that's something Patrick has planned, I believe. Well, I'm sure some of their suppliers in Asia, like in China and whatnot, would take well, Bitcoin. It, yeah, well, it'd be a lot easier to pay him in Bitcoin than to transfer well, yeah, the be dollars to Yuan. Yeah, yeah. So he wanted to give some uh, some benefit if people accepted Bitcoin. What he had in mind was paying pay him of like maybe a week early because Bitcoin's so much easier than any other payment method. But, but yes, if there's maybe uh, conversion fees, maybe they could save on those as well, conversion from you know, government currency to other government currency. So uh, he might be willing to uh, make that incentive there. But, but what you need to see is this loop close. You need to see Bitcoin used uh, from production to consumption and, and everywhere in between. That's what you need to see to s- you have a sustained price of Bitcoin uh, rise now. Um, a lot of people. I'm surprised at the number of people that don't uh, know that the protocol was set up to release a certain amount of bitcoins every block. When a block's supposed to come out every 10 minutes. So originally, for the first years of big four years of Bitcoin, it was there was supposed to be uh, 50 bitcoins released each block, and uh, we've been past four years. Now there's 25 bitcoins released each block. Now, in terms of block days or block time, we're, we're actually six years into Bitcoin. Now, in terms of the calendar, 
six years won't be until January. But in terms of the blocks, we're six years into Bitcoin now. In two more years, it's going to half again. Every four years, it's going to half. And so then it's going to switch from 25 Bitcoins to 12 and a half each block. And I think this um, more. S I think this is going to introduce more scarcity, more or less. You have to do the same amount of computing power for less Bitcoins that are more yeah. or less minted. Uh, I think that uh, could cause the price to rise again, uh, perhaps dramatically. I don't think as dramatically as we saw uh, from. Well, yeah, it's not going to go from least sixty to a thousand in yeah, a year. Well, not yeah, not instantaneous it, like that. Yeah, it won't. It won't be as dramatic as like from ten to uh, six hundred or to two hundred. That spike was pretty dramatic, and also the you know, one from like two hundred to, to or actually a hundred to a thousand. That was very dramatic. Yeah, too, that's one of the benefits of Bitcoin, right? Is a predictable scarcity, so they know what's going to happen. Right. It's not like so they're gonna yeah, drastically change so their behavior. So everybody during, but before the first halving, when the, when the block reward changes, some people call it the halving. So for the first halving, people were saying, "Oh, it's already priced in," blah blah blah. But then, when people started using it after the halving, the price really went up. Uh, mm. And and I think that it won't fully price itself in. Just yeah. Now, in terms of the price of Bitcoin, uh, I think that another thing we're not we might end up seeing is at some point there's going to be a tipping point where Bitcoin is useful enough that even though the relative val the value, the objective value, right? won't be won't rise at all the re the val to value of other currencies relative to bitcoin will shoot down and then like the dollar amount is going to go way up for example well, right now you can use bitcoin for a number of little things it's mostly like a curiosity at this point and most people they need when you're talking when you're not doing your little like nerd fest things right when you're actually day to day trying to pay your rent your groceries etc you still need dollars that's still money to people now, when you and for that reason, Bitcoin's sort of being held back a little bit. But as soon as Bitcoin becomes accepted to where you don't really need dollars for anything, that you can just do everything with Bitcoin, then the value of dollars, like what are we holding on as worthless paper crap for, and just going to go down, and then Bitcoin relative because of that is going to shoot up. What do you think of that? Well, I I think there's certainly the potential for that to happen. I think the current network cannot handle it but there was a tweet from Gra gavin like if you listen to our last show i mentioned the tweet from gavin that came out gavin andreessen who's been very involved in bitcoin development he's he's uh, taken a lesser role lately but um, he's still very knowledgeable about this he has uh, suggested that there is a technology that can be used to basically have arbitrary block sizes right now that uh, there's only a megabyte of transactions that's allowed every 10 minutes and that cannot that can handle about PayPal maybe maybe double what PayPal can handle. That's not a world payment system. That's not going to happen. But with this new technology that would allow arbitrary sized blocks, then uh, a situation where people are just throwing away their dollars uh, might happen. Like they're just trying to get rid of them as quick as they can uh, might happen. Uh, but you would need this there and probably the fee to be released a little bit too. Right now, six cents is. That's not extreme for the value you get from transferring money, uh, but uh, I think it would need to go down for people to use it to buy well, coffee. And for things. me, and i probably speaking for most of the people in this community, like a lot of us, we're just not using Bitcoin because it's a great currency. Like we're using it because we're not, we don't want to use their money. We're doing it as a political, philosophical viewpoint that I don't want to hold on to a Federal Reserve note. Like I want to do anything I can not to use a controlled currency, like for me. Like I want to use Bitcoin just because it's it's not you it's not controlled by any bank or any government. Right. Yeah, and I I can see in the future more and more people, hopefully seeing that and like you know, embracing Bitcoin or any other alt currency because you're li you're literally not using their money. I I honestly don't think that uh, mass adoption will happen because of uh, certain viewpoints, but I think ma mass adoption might happen out of necessity. Well, uh, that's that's one thing I think is really crucial is for people with all there's a lot of experimental technologies out there right and I think that this is this is sort of our mission as people in the Liberty community here in New Hampshire of all places so we take all these theories all these little experimental technologies and we apply them in a day-to-day -day use yeah in a day-to-day -day use on a very on a small scale but still in a practical application type scale and so we could have a whole little community here that runs entirely off of Bitcoin before the rest of the world does. So then the rest of the world can see it and they don't have to have this scary 
thing, go through the scary process of figuring out how they're going to live. They just have to live like we're living, and then that's about it. That's where the philosophy, the philosophical um, adherence to Bitcoin, things like that, come in is by being the first to take a risk and put in effort and legwork to make it easy for the mass adoption. Right. I mean, there's some things that are happening. I mean, there's transitional technologies like BitPay or companies, transitional companies like BitPay and uh, Coinbase that are they allowing... Bless BitPay, man. They, they've done so much. Yeah, they're the allowing the, uh, the merchants to accept Bitcoin without taking on any currency risk or taking on the amount of currency risk that the company is willing to take and no more. So that's those uh, companies are there uh, for that, but I I think that the the mass adoption is only going to happen when you can actually point out some of the advantages of Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, and, and I I think there's uh, really re really serious advantages that have yet to be explored fully. I think the remittance market is uh, you, you know about remittance. You know what that is? Explain that real fast. Yeah, yeah. That. Explain this for the for the viewers, for the viewers at, home. at home. As that's if I was three years old. That's fine. So <laughs> what do you mean, okay. as if? So re remittance is um, this concept that maybe people come to a different country, maybe the U.S., and then they work real hard and they make a lot of money and they want to support their family that happens to be back in their home country. I.e. the Mexican Western Union's phenomenon. Yeah. yeah and it's so easy to send money over Bitcoin than Western Union. And so oh, and so much cheaper. They would oh, rape yeah, you. They, yeah, no. it's like 30, 40 percent. The m okay. Wow. So, so there you go. Anybody that has any experience with this knows about the fees. I mean, we had a uh, uh, guest, Daniel, on our show, Neocash. Right? He discussed this specifically. He's from, I believe he's from Puerto Rico. Is it, is it right? Oh, man. No, it's Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Right? I knew, uh, I'm it's Puerto Rican. Wrong, I wrong think. island. Sorry. That's so racist okay. of you. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's actually it's ignorant. But uh, I'm, I'm just actually it's ignorant. Oh. It's not this kind of ignorance. It's just They're the broad the category. It's the broad category. I tried to get the right. I'm not racist. Know, right? I'm bigoted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, but yes, anybody that's tried to do this, and th so the money that's sent back to the other country is called remittance. And yeah. um, Bitcoin allows, you know, Bitcoin doesn't know anything about a border anywhere. So you can use it across the border as easy as you can use it across town or, or, or at a merchant. So a honey uh, badger of money. Yeah. So, yeah so what what I think you'll see is a remittance market will become pretty serious in Bitcoin. Uh, certainly to some, I mean, like, for example, if you try to get money into Somalia right now. Mm -hmm. uh, where they have no roads uh, and no hope. Do they have internet in Somalia? Uh, yes, I believe so. Oh, wow. They have, they have Things are looking they up. They have some of the best uh, cell phone service that you can imagine in Somalia. Mm. But uh, they do. Wow. It's a okay. fact. I wow. mean, that's, or at least there's wow. papers published that say that the cell phone service in Somalia is quite upstanding because what they've done is leapfrog. They never br built the copper wire infrastructure, so they don't ever have to pay that money out. And yeah, no, that's a huge – that's like an – Three hour oh, long discuss tangent. We can go on that. Yeah, but please yeah. go on. <laughs> they ha then they have no regulations on the uh, cell phone towers. So That's because they have no government. Anybody can set up any cell phone tower anywhere they want. And then actually, the result is the cell phone service is quite good. Oh. Uh, I mean, I don't know how that cell phone service translates to the internet. But anyway, so, uh, so but y sending money to Somalia, it's almost impossible if you're like in Great Britain. And the Somali currency is not very good. Is yeah. it very, I mean, when the government dissolved, they still traded pieces of paper like the government was around, but they, uh, but the government's not around, so it's it's kind of weird, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's yeah. the, and and um, I there's been weird things like people, have, somebody in Canada, if somebody had a contract with Canada to print a bunch of Somali currency, and then that was y accepted as valid because there's no one to stop any counterfeiting. Anyway. <laughs> Which you cannot do with Bitcoin. It, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. if we sort of <laughs> that's the beauty of Bitcoin. You cannot counterfeit it. Yeah, the blockchain so, yeah. prevents so that th from happening. They, they actually had a pretty stable currency until this uh, Canadian printing started happening. Huh. But I mean, it's actually a warlord that contracted for the, with Canada. Warlord government. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Same just difference. Yeah, right. Just a different name. Or different legitimacy is, claims. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Some some type of organization. I don't know if it's a government warlord. Now I'd like to point out that I'm probably the only person in this war in this room, but one of them who's actually rely had to rely on a Western Union trans um, transaction across borders. When I was about ten years ago I was studying in France and I needed to get some more money and some Euros and then I had to get something sent to this Western Union branch. Mm -hmm. They took like thirty percent off and I had to go find it during open hours and give them a bunch of weird information and then just get it out in euros and it was just a huge pain and bitcoin just hey ma i need money <laughs> there we go you got it it's like <laughs> it's that easy and there's just still nothing like that in the 
even though the advan the fiat world has become more advanced since since then, it's still not at that point. Right. So I mean, what you need is a a a, a society that has a, a sufficiently advanced computer infrastructure. Uh, that has some of these remittance problems or other type of problems. Maybe like Argentina has a very bad um, currency problem right now with their default recently. And just, l I mean, I wouldn't call it hyperinflation, but they've lost, you know, s s a significant portion of, uh, of value on their mm -hmm. Argentine peso over the last year. Yeah, and I was in Mexico for the great peso crash of the 90s. I mean, I was, I was like small. I didn't know much about currency when I was like four years old, but still. And Mexico, you know, the, again, the Mexican currency just crashed and lost all its value. They had to, like, repurpose the whole currency. I mean, yeah. Th like, that's never happened in the U.S. dollar, like, since basically yeah. the, the, the one they want, the yeah. Federal Reserve. And then know? there's, like, Turkey had to knock off three zeros. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it, was, it was, what was Italy it? Italy did before. Yeah, the, Mexico before was three zeros, too. Yeah. The magic I mean, number. I mean, <laughs> the magic bullshit number right uh, there. Just like, ah, it's it. worth more now. <laughs> I mean, uh, br the Brazilian real, that's been cr a crazy story if you've watched that. I mean, they, they got up to, like, quadrillion no. percent for inflation there for a while. And it was, you know, like, quadrillion, right? Nobody remembers those words. but Oh, yeah. And then back in 07 or 06, I think, I was in 05. 05, I was in Romania for a couple of weeks. And I, it was in the middle of their currency transition from the Romanian lay, the old lay to the new lay. Mm -hmm. And it was, a again, a cutoff. Five zeros. <laughs> so I used to carry around like a hundred thousand lay note with me all the time. But since it was poorly made, it started to disintegrate. So I left it at a tip at some waitress who told me she had, she'd read Atlas Shrugged. So I was like, "Hey, you seem cool. Here you go." <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this is a, a traditional. This is a property of currencies. I mean, uh, probably a lot of your listeners are in the United States, and um, I live in the United States hey, myself. We have a lot of listeners. You know, we in, all live in. We have a lot of listeners in, in Scotland right now. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, for reasons of our last episode. Yeah, well, great. <laughs> so we, we, but like in the United States, we kind of take the currency for granted. But uh, the United States did not have a currency that has all these problems until uh, actually t fully until Nixon, because Nixon's what took us off the gold standard, even the quasi gold standard, right? It kind yeah. of went away in with 1913, but the th that didn't happen. But then there was a readjustment in 1935 or whatever. And then now, but then we were completely off the gold standard with uh, Nixon, Richard Nixon. And so now uh, we, we've, I think the dollar has bought a lot of time because it was uh, tied to something reasonable, but now it's just kind of an abstract unit as all the other currencies that end up dropping a bunch of zeros uh, are. But so. didn't Nixon promise going off the gold standard was only temporary? I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, he did. I can't keep <laughs> up with uh, politicians' lies. And their promises? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I was just Same trying thing. to get the history of it. I'm like, okay, it changed then. That's <laughs> yeah, all I know. Exactly. I yeah. know it changed. I, don't, I didn't go back. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, now, as far as... I don't think there's any currency on a current hard metal standard right now. Mm. I think even the, the Swiss franc, are they on any portion well of the gold the standard the anymore? The Swiss franc, I, when, when I, I've been looking at currencies for a while, they used to be considered to be the standard, but now they're kind of quasi-pegged to the euro. So uh, they're, they're going to have all the problems. Well, the every Euro's government gonna. currency is backed by the gun. Right. Well, I mean, whoa. Yeah, yeah. which is why the U U.S. currency has been fairly stable is because, again, lots of guns. You know, well, uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm oversimplifying it for the viewers. The at faith home. and credit of the United States government. Where do you think that comes from? Yeah. Right? Am I wrong on that? No, maybe. It's dropping truth well, bombs. It's, it's certainly dropping truth bombs. It, well, the, some of these things, like you're dropping the or, or, or dropping these zeros, right? Dropping the zero bombs. Uh, that has happened quite often. I mean, I mean, even in the U.S., there's a phrase not worth the continental. That was basically hyperinflation during the Revolutionary period. The greenback that was issued by uh, Lincoln eventually basically hyperinflated out of existence. And uh, so, I mean, we have hyperinflation that happens all the time. It's just uh, it just takes like 30 years, 50 years. So, as, as you know, organisms that live maybe a hundred, if we're lucky. <laughs> we don't, and we don't pay attention to other countries very often. We don't see it very much. Yeah, that's a, one thing I think is very important for people, especially in this continent where you just have a whole continent to yourself and the whole world in some ways tied to you. I think it's very important to travel abroad, not as a tourist, but like living with locals, etc. Just get a perspective of things are different elsewhere in the world for the very reason that all these problems that people say, oh, no, that could never happen. 
they happen everywhere else. Everything else, there's, if you go across the world, there's a case study for just about everything. So you don't have to say, well, no, what will we do if we slash taxes and do this? Oh, all the programs will go away and then people will be starving to death in the streets. Well, no, in this country they did that and then they're doing just fine. Or, well, no, it's hyperbole that our currency will crash. Well, in this country, this, you know, you mm -hmm. can have more case studies and things like that yeah. around the world. And, and yeah. it, it can just show exactly what we're headed for here. Um, that's, that's very valid, Joel. And um, there's something that's kind of weird if you talk to – I'm going to – uh, generalize a little bit, but sure. if you talk, hey, to, that's what we do here. If huh? you talk yeah. to, we're not, not scholars gonna, or anything. I'm going to generalize to to Americans, right? So if you talk to many Americans, uh, there's all this. This can't happen here. Uh, you know, they, there's almost of course like, they can happen here. It, it, it's almost like people think that this is like a magical land that doesn't act like the rest of the world, and it, that's that's actually not the facts. The facts are that we're just these organisms that run around. We're pretty much the same. We've got different traits, yes. But, uh, you know, our brains work similarly, um, and economics works the same no matter where they are, you know, no matter where you happen to be located. And s and so w there is nothing special about it. It's just that I, I think that uh, the early United States enjoyed a, a much more severe version of freedom than we have now. And uh, that there was a lot of pro that brought a lot, a lot of prosperity. And so now we can see that we're actually kind of just eating away at that what was the wealth that we had well, you can see it just kind of get eaten away and and more and more uh, dilapidation happen now, on a side side note, i think that would make a great tagline for the united states of america severely free do, do you think <laughs> yeah that would be <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> severely free i just i thought it was funny to phrase it that way yeah but it is but um i mean we're really we, conservative we, with, 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 with the freedom Romney. came the prosperity and now we don't have the freedom and you can see the prosperity just kind of go slowly yeah. away well bitcoin is trying to change that well um yeah i think and it hasn't done it yet uh no there's a lot of hope in it you know there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of, a lot of and because bitcoin is literally giving us and the blockchain in general just the idea of the blockchain is giving us the hope the tool to actually you know t just walk the walk instead of just talk the talks and we need something to like you know be free and have something open and that's it like this is something that allows us to actually have you know more freedom prosperity in a free market world that we want to live in right it's, yeah. it's a tool yeah it's exactly yeah. right but it's before tool. we never really had a toy there's like gold and silver but there wasn't really a viable tool well, so that it wasn't controlled by a government. You know what I'm saying? Am I wrong okay. on that? So uh, here's when it clicked for me. Okay, I was a fan of gold and silver. I'm not trying to knock gold and silver. I think no, it's should fine. Have that. It's I'm perfectly just saying, like, fine. It's, it's for like daily transactions between people. It's, it's not inert. that it sits there. It's scarce. It's yeah. it's pretty. It's fun to collect. It, there's all kinds of good things about gold and silver, and and it's going to retain your value better than paper, I would imagine, uh, over the long haul, not day to day. Well, maybe, yes, day to day, but you, there's ups and downs, so you buy low. Anyway, so uh, I was into gold and silver, and for whatever reason, one night I was like, huh, I wonder what's happening with poker freedom. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of annoying that they just outlawed poker. Like, yeah, I've never heard that, about yeah. people playing the poker. I, I, haven't heard of, websites. I haven't heard of a poker epidemic or, you know, these. I mean, I don't know what the what the problem with poker was. I never even knew people were playing poker online. Oh, I'm, my God. She's been I mean, diagnosed with poker. I mean, I mean, I know people gamble and gamble to the extreme, but I didn't know anybody personally. I didn't hear any stories about it in the paper. I didn't I don't know who was having these problems with the online gambling. And um, but they just outlawed it, and so in 2011 or whatever, it's just like I wonder what happened with that. What are people doing? Because you know they're going to work around it, right? There, there's something funny that was on television. There, like the, in Manchester, there's this. They, I, I I don't watch TV normally, but I got an oil change today, and uh -huh. uh, I actually <laughs> watched a news segment so earlier today on the first time on WMUR. Yeah, about, I, I think about the whole overdose. I don't know. Yeah, it was gosh, a local another. Bullshit. It thing. was a local news around here, and apparently there's a uh, something that acts like a drug, and maybe it is called spice. Have yeah, and then um, thirty some overdoses the, the in mayor, 24 hours. Oh man, yeah, the mayor was talking about it or whatever. I mean, I, I think overdoses are horrible. And that wouldn't have happened if the if pot was legal. I don't. Well, I don't know but about anyway. all these things, but um, but I do know that they. What was kind of crazy was they were th the in the town was hoping that the the. Uh, the state would pass something that would 
permanently uh, ban him for, or permanently get him off the streets. And I, and I made a comment, uh, just like it did all the other drugs, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I mean, like uh, heroin's illegal in the U.S., but I know somebody that was addicted to heroin, you know, and he's around my age, and heroin's been illegal for about my lifetime. So uh, that didn't work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? So, um, and so it's just kind of crazy that the news, somebody that's supposed to be objective and all this, uh, is saying that it will get it off the streets forever. I don't know. Where did that come from? They should say, so there can be an, uh, uh, an, an infinite war where we're completely wasting resources and trying to futilely stop something that's, I mean, that's, wh that's what my, well, that's all the evidence I have on any of this type of drug war. You, you, so now here's a good thing. So you mentioned pro pot at the beginning. I'm, yeah. I might not necessarily be pro pot. I'm just pro not I'm, putting people I'm, in I'm cages. Pro people, not yeah. Pro people not it, hurting exactly. it. Yeah. And, and you can, like, people can say that it's wrong and not associate with people who do. And, and that's fine. But if you do anything more than that, then you are being um, not very nice, to put it. Well, well, for me, like, the, the reason why I say pro-pop, pro-gun, and pro-coffee is because there's so many people uh, in the United States that are they're either – most people that are pro-gun are conservatives. Most people that are pro-pot are liberals. And, but at the same time, the people that would go after either one of those – are the same people. It's the state. It's you know. It's the police state. They will go after the same people that they're they're going after after the, for the drug war. Those are the exact same people that are going to go after someone's guns. Right. Yeah. You know. They don't see and that. they're yeah. They don't see the common enemy. The same you know group of people that are uh, addressing after both groups of people. And I also say pro coffee because in all honesty, if they oh, ban if they can, if they ban the coffee bean, then they would have a revolution. You know, yeah. Forget the nap. I am. I, I would I, go in the streets. Man. I am certainly pro coffee. I'm, I will. I'm, I will become a drug dealer and sell and. And trade I mean, coffee yeah. beans I'll I'll be like because the open the trench coat. Yeah, like the, yeah I got some. <laughs> I got some fresh right roasted here, beans right here. I'll be your. I'll be yeah. your customer. There you go. Uh, on yeah. The now my little go anti-government rant for the evening, which I mean, I'm sure we could all do, but it's just the stupidity of making laws banning things from the very thing of like, okay, we got this epidemic, we got this problem going on here. How are we going to deal with this great societal problem? How, how about we just tell them they can't. It can't do that anymore. Yeah, that'll <laughs> fix it. It's like the minimum wage thing. It's like, oh, people aren't getting paid enough. Hey, well, let's just say, let's just say they get paid more. Or let's just say, <laughs> this. it's just like, no, it doesn't work that way. It just, life doesn't work that way. It's like, oh, they're doing drugs. What can we do? We just say that they can't, you know? <laughs> <And> it's like, <laughs> like right. I don't get that. It's you, just horrible. You have to teach people what. What's the right thing? You have to bring people to the correct way, right? And yeah. If you if you force people to the correct way, then there's no merit in that at all. I mean, well, people well, should find their own it, way. And it should and be people correct are, people because... Need, people need to be allowed to make mistakes in their life to learn from it. And it should be correct because people want the consequences of what their actions are. That should be what the correct action is. Yeah. And it shouldn't be because other people don't like the consequences. It should be people that are experiencing the consequences that make the decision if that's correct or not oh i, I completely it, I mean agree. like um, i mean like you know you can do the right thing and and get something uh beneficial to you and help people in your community or you can do something maybe neutral that doesn't maybe you just sit there all day or you know maybe you can do something negative that actually hurts some people in your community and um i think and those actions should be judged based on those things not based on well, yeah. I'm not against, like, you know, a community or society or not looking down with, like, social norms on other people. As long as they're not forcing their belief system on other people, that's when I kind of care. Like, in the whole drug war and whatnot, you know, there's a group of people that don't want other people to do drugs. So they're going to, you know, use the amount of force that they think is willing to be necessary to stop that from happening. If that means, you know, throwing hundreds and thousands, not millions of people into jail cells, that's what they're going to do. I kind of disagree with that. You know, um, well, yeah, and it's also a huge cost on society. It's 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 a cost to the drug user. I mean, and if you're trying to help the drug user, that doesn't, doesn't make help any at sense. all. That no. doesn't make any sense. It's 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 not a position of love you're coming from. Yeah, like the prohibition increases the scarcity of the drug, which increases yeah. the price of the drug and the potency. Yeah, yeah, and so people are scrambling to get like this, you know, for yeah. more pricey drug. And yeah, I mean, yeah, we probably have. I mean, liquor use in the U.S. is probably much higher than it would have been if prohibition never happened. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, because mm -hmm. because it was just easier to run rum run than to run a keg of beer. It was just easier, 
yeah. and you get the same drug per. Now, I think you touched on an interesting thing when you're talking about the cost of regulating. And one thing, I, there's a lot of really like pro liberty, but pro secure border people out there, right? They believe, That's okay, well, oxymoron. we love, okay, well, we're getting there, right? They're constitutionalists. They believe, they believe in liberty, you know, peace, you know, liberty, justice for all, all that kind of crap. Except but then for outside. them, for them, and they don't even believe that it's wrong for Mex. They don't. They're not even anti-immigration. They're like, yeah, they can't get, let them come here, but legally, and we got to secure <laughs> the border. And what they don't get is what they're, they're like. Okay, fine. You say secure the border. Yeah, poof. Let's make it secure. I'm gonna. Just, Weigh my secure border wand and it'll become secure. No, what are you actually talking about here? You're talking about a massive police state. You're talking about a massive border wall with snipers in the nest. You're talking about a massive IDing system where papers please. You're talking about a totalitarian state to enforce this one little bullshit thing that you think is worth holding on to. Mm. You're just—it's not just well. Just as long as they're in the country legally, and it's like, yeah, but, but what you're asking is a totalitarian state to get to that goal. So you're not pro-liberty at all. And there's just – well, I mean, and also – I, well, I just want to take a different I'm, – I'm not necessarily taking a contrary position, but it's kind well, of – By all means, if you no, want to take ahead. contrary position, go for it. What, I'm not no, right. what, what I want to say is that if, if somebody wants to come to the country and they happen to be a medical doctor, there should uh, – you know, a medical doctor. Do you want a medical doctor to be – in your neighborhood, or do you not? Usually, yes. Yes, right. Unless Would you rather two medical doctors be in your neighborhood than one? Well, unless the second one is the guy from Saw or something. Yeah, if the, okay, if the guy is a horrible <laughs> medical doctor. But in general, shouldn't you think that you should just, like, let medical doctors in, period? Basically, um, yeah. And, and uh, like, I, you, you've introduced me. I went to grad school, yeah. like, for a while. Um, math, right? So it takes a while to do that. I, I spent about 12 years in college and you know like most people spend 12 years in public school i spent another 12 years yeah i'm, I'm sorry if you it need a hug fine. i'm ready here for it you, was bro. it was i enjoyed it i enjoyed it. i got him to pay me for the last like six or seven of them or eight <laughs> there years. we go oh, never nice. mind there i go. rescinded my hug off i got him <laughs> well, i got him to pay me it was great I, I taught and they paid me and well it was it was not great pay but i mean it got me through right so um w one thing was that like i actually i got interviewed by the nsa okay um, You're interviewed by the NSA yeah, yeah, the for a NSA job, NSA. or because no. they're spying on you? No, I don't. Probably, maybe, like, maybe, maybe. After all this news came out, I'm thinking, well, maybe they wanted to know about me. But what they told me is they were interviewing me for my buddy Chris. And there's a few Chris's you can't look it up. And then uh, I'm interviewing <laughs> my, yeah. for me for my other buddy who happens to be female. I'm not going to mention your name because it's a very unique name. So, um, and I try to talk to Chris and this other person about. Um, their application to the NSA. The idea is that when somebody applies to be a job a thing, other than say they do background checks, they check out all the friends and all that. It makes it kind of makes sense, right? So it's like, oh, NSA wants to talk to you about so and so. It's like, okay, but I'm not. Those two people didn't get a job at the NSA, and I try to talk to them about the job they applied for, and they didn't really seem to understand what I was talking about. So maybe they were just wanting to get a profile on me. Who knows? Wow. Well, I'll, I have um, a story about that, too, because, you know, I used to be in the math field, too. Really? Before, before I went to the whole political arena, uh -huh. I was uh, going to be a mathematics major that's, or whatever. That's something that's freaked me out when I come here. There's a lot of analytical brains that have yeah, moved here. People, from yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm there's not a, a lot of hyper-intelligent people in this community. Well, that's the thing. Hyper-intelligent though I might well, be. I'm just saying analytical <laughs> brains. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm more of a creative person than an analytical person, although okay. I was forced into an analytical field. And so I was going to be going to actuarial science and yeah. getting all that probably Get all stuff. the money. Make yeah, the money. make all the money, right? Okay, that was exactly my cold blooded. Like, anyway, it's not so, bad. I mean, people need actuarial yeah, I like stuff. Money. You make, you know, it's, you help know what the risk of stuff is. It makes sense. Yeah. So I, 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 eventually, I realized that all this math stuff that I was successfully doing was like the limit. I was not really a math brain. I was just forcing, forcing it, and I got out of it. But anyway, during the meantime, I w applied to and I got a, I get accepted to an internship with the CIA. Except I decided to decline it because part of the, the thing you have to like sign with your blood or whatever is you c anything you do here you cannot talk to your friends right. family members anyone about ever or we will find you and yeah. get you so, and I just did not I didn't want to do that you know yeah. what I'm saying so I just said no I I can't sorry I can't work for the CIA yeah the, well this was NSA and so I don't know if it's exactly the same but uh, it's probably close it's probably enough. worse well uh, I don't know. Well, what I got was they say, oh, this is classified. Psh, 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 here's the proof of this. Blah, 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 blah. 
and the proof was actually probably in a graduate's book somewhere. And <laughs> exactly. You know, it wasn't really classified. It's just they, they I think they start you off with things that are classified that aren't really because uh, they just trying to test you to see how anyway. So where is this going? NSA interviewed me. Um, I don't know. Was this the basis <laughs> for the movie Goodwill Hunting? No, oh, no, okay. no. So anyway, but Good I think that's hunting. one one reason I did stay involved with Bitcoin so early is because I like as the pri- like I bought a little bit to play poker. Mm-hmm. Okay, now this is let's get let's tell. Let's this go story. back to that. How did you get yeah. into Bitcoin? Uh, well, I just I they, like the oh, story, it's like okay, way. Bitcoin uh, allows poker, and I'm not a big I actually I like poker, but I would I would never play online at the normal federal government currency sites because usually they're what you call big tables there's a big amount of money you need to put down even just to play and i don't like putting around a big amount of money because i don't want to lose a big amount of money okay who does makes but, sense but with bitcoin they had penny poker basically the equivalent of penny poker right back then maybe bitcoin was a dollar and you could bet, bet up to like 0.01 and it was like oh that's a penny okay yeah penny blind sure great um, up, so i played poker and so I bought Bitcoin with the intention of just playing poker and losing, <laughs> you, know? Uh-huh. And you know, because that's what you do when you play poker, right? You lose because if you think you're going to win, you can get all carried away and just try to win all the time. But, <laughs> but, Which uh, is why I don't play poker. Well, anyway, I was enjoying myself playing poker. But, okay, we talked about gold and silver, too. Okay, mm-hmm. so after the poker game was through, I don't know if I won or lost or whatever. Um, there was somebody in the little chat box in the corner, and he, they weren't playing, and it, th- they were just chatting with me. How do you get the Bitcoin, and how, how do I get Bitcoin? And this was kind of a risk, but I was like, okay, I'll sell you some Bitcoin. I don't know. It's, uh, so I sold them like $50 worth or something. I don't know how much. and you know, It's about what I call it. I sold it to him at cost. Uh-huh. And um, you know, so he sent me PayPal. I sent him the Bitcoin. Everything's fine. And he's playing poker the next day or that day or the next. I saw him the next day. Um, well, I went into my PayPal account to look at the payment. And you can click and see the person's real name because, you, you know, because of the traditional payment system. Yeah. See the person's real name. And I couldn't find their address. Luckily, they concealed that from me. But they did tell me his country. Guess his country doesn't really matter it was new zealand okay okay it wasn't even my country it right? was far, was this, far i was ha- doing this in new hampshire and he was in new zealand so it's like yeah it's another s- it's a whole southern hemisphere it's uh, other <laughs> yeah. side of the planet it's, yeah it's the other side of the planet so that's when it kind of hit me what this bitcoin is try to do this with silver okay yeah he, try, he wants to buy silver with me. okay great well send me the payment okay paypal i'll, I'll accept that even though there's some risk with that Okay, I accept the PayPal. Okay, now I gotta mail the silver to him. Now he's supposed to play poker. How's that gonna work? What's he gonna <laughs> mail exactly. the silver it to the poker? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to pay the shipping, right? The shipping, or somebody has to pay the shipping. I need to charge him more, or you know, and th- I'm not gonna do it because of the shipping alone. He's not gonna pay it because of the shipping. And how the heck are we gonna play poker? <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, that's when it kind of kicked in what this Bitcoin was. It's a whole new way of doing things yeah i have and a similar story on that too it's just because oh uh, so i write articles for a living a lot of the time yeah and so s- i've been writing for this one for a couple of different publications in the u.s one of them paid for me with like they mailed a check and since i was moving between two different places like it got lost and I, it didn't get lost but i had to like go to the other place to find the check once it got there and it was you know again a few weeks delay and then paypal was the same thing it was like a few several like a business week almost to get to my account my paypal account and then a few more days to get to my bank from there it was this big annoying thing and this is people in the u.s within like a day's drive right and then anyway i have people writing for me payment bitcoin matter seconds bam they have it in another country in another you know they don't even have to do the currency thing just like that and it's like i just look i'm like the the fiat money system is stupid. It doesn't fucking work. <laughs> it, this just sucks. <laughs> like, like th- there's this thing out here. I can just bam. Then they get the payment right away. Almost no transaction fee, instantaneous. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Yay! And then that's it. And it's just type that type on the computer. Bam, right there. Or smartphone. I mean, it's yeah. I'm, pre- I'm preaching alone, to the, it's worth it. I mean, I'm I preaching just, to the choir. But I'm just yeah. this this r- these real world examples of how it works yeah. is just like. 
This is a dinosaur thing. This paper money. It's just, just it's it's bullshit. I just paid for dinner last uh, t- t- right before the show in Bitcoin. It was real easy. Went over to Murphy's. Um, no, I, I my uh, you bootstrapped it. My dining partners were accepting Bitcoin for my share of the bill. Oh. Exactly, you bootstrapped. There you it. go. <laughs> like, that still works. So, which know? is a common occurrence here. Well, I was I was I said which one do you prefer? And usually I pay, I pay people what they prefer. Like if yeah. so, like at Porkfest, if somebody was selling something, is like I was like, what do you prefer? And you and know, they said Dogecoin. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they usually <laughs> right, you write the you had the video on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And you're that, probably responsible for more Doge acceptance than anyone else on yeah. the planet. You well, know, Porkfest 2015, real fast. Dogecoin's taking over. I'm going to call it right now. Dogefest. Right. Yeah, I'm selling all my Dogefest. Yeah, I'm going to got wow. Exchange all my Bitcoin. So festival. <laughs> so anyway, the the point with the yeah, even the dining but part it kicks in. It, it once it clicks, like this is what it allows you to do. It's like whoa. Yeah. Once oh, yeah. Once you pop, you can't stop. And Once you block, you can't stop. And, <laughs> and then, and then as as what like as the price went up a little bit, I was like, okay, what is what the heck am I doing here? You know, d- to have this much money involved in this, and so, uh, so you know, with the math background, that's where that came in. So I could look <sighs> at, I could like check into actually like the nuts and bolts of it a little bit. So every time it, Especially you know, every time I got a little bit. Um, worried about it. I just started looking into it more and more, and, and I haven't come to. A, I mean, there was a, there was that fifty one percent attack that was getting close to happening, and people are a little bit too worried about it. They were they think as soon as somebody goes over fifty one, there's going to be an attack. That's not uh-huh. the case. It's it, you would have to actually want to attack Bitcoin um, in order for this to happen. So uh, yeah, I mean that that is something that I think people involved in Bitcoin should be worried about, but. Uh, it's it's um, I think it's a sm- it's it would also shoot the people who did the first one percent tax in the f- in their f- own foot basically because they're making money off of Bitcoin right as it spans so yeah yeah if you had fifty one percent of the Bitcoin miners out there you wouldn't want to hurt Bitcoin you would want to help Bitcoin at that yeah, point yeah <laughs> you're making hey, a profit <laughs> yeah if we just let these things run oh my gosh well, we we're super get rich. A huge pro- yeah I mean, yeah it's, it's I mean I I do I think that you know people should switch to maybe. Uh, pools like P2P pool um, and maybe should not mine at the most uh, the prominent mining pool uh, out there, but um, but I don't think you should get all worried when it gets a where, little bit crazy. Where do you see Bitcoin going in the next couple of years? Um, I'm not just talking about price. I'm saying like adoption this, or this yeah, and like please, everything. Please be a little bit more specific than to the moon. Well, it's it's going <laughs> either to the moon or to zero. It's one of the two. <laughs> Don't say <laughs> Don't that, say man. That. We're trying to believe. I want to believe. I really think it's it's going to be one or two. It's either going to work or it's not. And if it works, it's going to work really well. And um, you said not in terms of price. And it's going to have a very substantial adoption. It might happen in certain countries first, like Argentina is something I would actually expect it to actually – uh, you think it's going to be adopted there? Like Cyprus, I mean, they're, widespread they're, they're, adoption they're, in Argentina. I do. I I do. I mean, I don't know what else you're going to do if you live in Argentina once your currency starts hyperinflate. Yeah, because other places in the world, you just there's nothing to do. But now with this technology, yeah, I mean, we have, have some place to go that's very I mean, efficient. Just like what, like a decade ago when they had their last hyperinflation, not even a decade. Um, the, you know, they there wasn't Bitcoin available. Now, when they hyperinflate again, they'll have. Uh, Bitcoin available, so I, I think they'll and they'll be trying to buy whatever they can, dollars, whatever, gold. Uh, th- so and Bitcoin will just be one of those things. Probably the best option um, of those things. You know, there there is discussion of a bail-in in the U.S. Apparently, by the vice chair of the Federal Reserve, who you mentioned bail-in. Have you heard about this? No. What, what are you talking so the about? bail-in is what ha- kind of they call what happened in Cyprus, where the banks just took the money to kind of capitalize the banks. You know, you mean theft. Well, yes, uh, <laughs> exactly. Actually, call what it is. Actually, um, it, I, I haven't read all the agreements with the banks and stuff, but somebody said when you put money in a bank, it's ter- you're under contract, but it's actually their money, and I don't know. It's, but uh, if there was a bail-in in the U.S., we all saw the bail-in in Cyprus, and that was right before the spike to two hundred or something. You know, what a what a twenty-fold gain, or yeah, around a tw- whatever, do- at least double. Right yeah. after with the Cypress stuff, so if if there was just some, there's already talk about it in the U.S. Um, if I mean the thing is, if they ever froze the banks, the, the people would get scared. And uh, the thing is, I don't think people understand it enough to actually just like flock out and get Bitcoin. 
Uh, yeah, which is why I think you know Bitcoin's still beta. I, that's why I think <laughs> yeah, it's very. It's beta. That's yeah. why I think it's still it's so important for people like us in this part of the world right here to start building up an infrastructure around entirely Bitcoin and things like that, so that in the other parts of the world they don't have that few weeks or month or whatever delay to get their shit together with Bitcoin that they just there's already options for them there's already services and options that an infrastructure they can just borrow when they're ready for the transition they don't have to just figure it all out from zero which this is, definitely does feel like a testing ground for Bitcoin because every, every free state or liberty oriented person I run into here has a you know, a Bitcoin wallet on their smartphone. Yeah. Or if you, you don't, know. after you meet them, they do. Yeah, yep. Well, yeah. They, they should. You know, there are there are a few holdouts, but I mean, most people have it. You yeah. Know, it's, it's, com it's common occurrence to see Bitcoin transactions take place in person in front of you. It might not even be you, be someone else, but you see that wherever you go in regards, like within the community, you see Bitcoin transactions taking place in front of you, and it's commonplace. You know, like I went to, uh, when I was at uh, Porkfest with all the different vendors that were accepting Bitcoin. Um, you know, that seemed normal to me. It seemed like normal life to go up and like scan someone's QR code and like, you know, buy coffee with Bitcoin. Like that, that's a normal thing for me. And every time I went and did that throughout Porkfest, if there was someone behind me that I didn't recognize or I knew that they're not from New Hampshire, I would ask, Hey, have you ever seen a Bitcoin transaction in person? And a couple of times they said, no, I haven't. So watch this. Yeah, and I you know, scan, and take my phone, and Watch you know, the scan. Fail, so yeah, oh, God, buddy, that was a buddy to do that was a me. bitch. Like the <laughs> Wi-Fi at Porkfest <laughs> did suck. That was the one downfall yeah. of Porkfest. I mean, everybody should get but, US cellular phones. I'm kidding, but but yeah, but at, at any rate, <laughs> Verizon worked too. I think. Yeah, yeah. as well. I was. On, I'm rocking T-Mobile still. I don't know oh. why the hell I'm doing here with T-Mobile. I, I I'm I've been lazy to switch because it works in Manchester, so it's good enough for me. You know, but at any rate, T is for mobile. Yeah, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, I'm showing people like this. This is normal life. Like what you just saw, that's like normal occurrence yeah. for me here. Yeah, you and know, this, there was it, that scene. Oh my god, it's, I've never seen one in person. Like that's that's, that's normal just here. The way it works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, certain unnamed people at Porkfest did have a boisterous night of festivities and had a had a little bit of a hangover in the morning. And one of the vendors was selling menudo which is the Mexican miracle hangover cure. But it was the one vendor that didn't accept Bitcoin. So I was just like, no, you're out of luck. I'm sorry. You're, you're behind the curve. I'm going to take my Bitcoins there was a elsewhere couple vendors that's I all didn't. I had. <laughs> there's a couple you know? of vendors I would not buy anything from if they didn't accept Bitcoin. I was trying to go full yeah. Bitcoin the whole time. Yeah, there's one, uh, an older fellow there was selling things, and he ended up taking silver. Yeah, that was because yeah, you, you can turn around. Like, okay. you, can, you can go over to the go buy silver with Bitcoin and turn around and use the silver and buy it somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, I was like, like okay, you're taking silver. All right, you're making a cho you're making yeah, an yeah, effort. Yeah, I did All do right. that one time. I bought some. I bought some silver with Bitcoin, then use some Bitcoin. Use the silver to buy bacon pancakes. Oh, bacon pancakes. Make a bacon pancake. Those pancakes Have you had the fantastic. bacon chocolate chip pancakes? No, I had. The, yeah, I had oh, the chocolate oh. chip on there, and I had the um the the. The maple syrup on top of that, man, that place rocked. It yeah, was freedom, worth going to. Freedom is delicious. It took like an hour for them to make it, but it was <laughs> <laughs> it was cheap though. You know? But it was worth it, man. That freedom was like the best place is there. Delicious. Yeah. Freedom ain't free. Yeah, well, it cost mm. silver. Yeah, it costs. And then silver. the coffee, right? Uh, it was like a buck of coffee for the refill after you got the pork fest mug. Yeah. Again, this is like inside baseball for the well, you know what? Yeah, but, but you know what? They should be anyway, there for next pork fest. So, anyways, if they're and it was a dollar refill, but so I just got a little what quarter ounce of silver. And just gave it to him and said, "Hey, you'll know my face. I'll just get coffee the rest of pork fest six okay. more times with this." And mm -hmm. it worked, you know. Again, the market with no regulation, yeah, top-down bureaucracy fine. bullshit. It just works out great. Yeah, it was on an honor system, and yeah, yep. Yeah, I, I mean, I loved spinning silver when that was a thing, and now Bitcoin has now, quite. Speaking taken of the over. honor system and uh, oh, adverse transactions, yeah. Shire dude. I know you. Uh, Shire dude had some experience with that lately. Um, how is, but it's been a lot easier to track things with Bitcoin, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when you when you're selling stuff, you know, like I'll sell like uh, snacks and, and beverages um, when I'm not even there, like with the honor system, right? And you, it, it dings on your phone, and, and boom, you know, you've got Bitcoin. You know, when someone's buying something, and sometimes I'll even I'll have been hanging out, and I'll get a ding on my phone, and I'll go down to see who bought stuff for me, you know, and I'll talk to them. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, the it, honor system, of course, doesn't always work. The, yeah, the Bitcoin bought, network does. I bought does. your ice cream, yeah. and you came down. and yeah, <laughs> I was like, hey, I know what you <laughs> yeah, bought, boy. Blockchain, <laughs> you know, the blockchain, 
just and keeps I, all the <laughs> records of everything. So yeah. you can say, all right, I'm short. These are my transactions. This is my goods. I've had this, that, 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 that. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Was that you? Oh, that was you. Okay, we were good. Yeah. And unfortunately, just... I also had to accept Federal Reserve notes. Yeah. And, and, that's and that a that's where the punch it gets right messy. And, yeah. And there's so much about the the Bitcoin thing because like I could pay you, and you could be in another country or whatever, and I pay you with Bitcoin, and you say, Did, "Was that really you that paid me?" I could sign. You give me just any statement, and I sign it with my Bitcoin key, and you're like, "Yeah, that you paid me." You know. Yeah. yeah that that it, payment came from you. Yeah. If it came from any address that was, I signed with any address that that payment came from, and you know it was me, um, more or less, by the security of the Bitcoin protocol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what if you got some donations from some dude in India at the exact same time as some fucker made off with like half your ice cream sandwiches in your fridge and you thought he paid for him but you really didn't it was a co coincidence of shire dude donations whoa well, i have blown right i well, do have different wallets but that. yeah yeah good good that's the easy solution to that yeah, yeah. You just have a different wallet for your donations yeah. as composed of your ice cream sales and you'll be mm -hmm. good speaking of we take donations so please uh Follow the little Bitcoin wallet uh, right below this yeah. video or the podcast. Yeah, or yeah. you know what the best you know, time to we, do we it? We can use it for if it. If you so have a smartphone to do Bitcoin, right, at the very end, there's like, as it fades out, there's like the music fades in, bam, 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 and then goes, boing, and you see like the big so proud of the music, QR the code right next to the Bitcoin sign. It's like, you can't miss it. Just do just, it. Just like, yeah, because you know it. what? You know, got to show the rebels some love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. For right. sure. If you don't have any Bitcoin, go out and buy it and donate it. Yeah, yeah. We don't Rebel take. We do not take federal by donations. Well, you can go to Coinbase. Viewers and like you, please donate. We don't hey. take Federal Reserve notes. Hey, you go to Coinbase, take all the Federal Reserve notes out of your account, buy Bitcoin with them. And out send of them. your goddamn. Yeah, account. just send empty them. your bank account, put it in Coinbase, <laughs> and just throw <laughs> all that into the Rebel Love Show. We'll, we will appreciate it. We'll do right. more valuable right. things with it than you are. And then. Uh, <laughs> And then, uh, then you'll, but you might actually make a profit on the deal because then you'll know how to use Coinbase and buy Bitcoin. Yeah, then you'll, you're, you're, you'll be ready for the apocalypse. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, well, there you go. You know what, Darren? It's what? been a d very, very distinct pleasure having you on. Where can the internet at large find you and your content, et cetera? Well, the internet at large can find me at Neocash Radio, where we do a podcast every week, and uh, well, there's certain blog entries, like we have a How to Get a Free Millibit blog entry that's uh, whoop, up, whoop. up recently, so you can go to several websites and get Satoshis, and they add up, once they add up to enough, they'll be sent to your wallet. Uh, so if you wanted to get into Bitcoin without spending much, that's one way you can do that. Uh, you can also go to DarrenTap.com, which is basically my playground. I um, I bought DarrenTap.com because I didn't want anybody else to buy it. I squatted on my own name. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't feel bad about it either because it's my name, right? It's I can't even do that. Someone already has it. Oh, uh, See, see, the, that's yeah, the thing. I have it's a like, common name. So. Yeah, well, I don't. But I was just like, if I don't get it now, I mean, there's some guy in Canada with my name. But I, if I don't get it now, what if somebody gets it later? I just might as well get it later. And I don't really feel it's bad squatting on it. I, I kind of think squatting is bad because it's not really using things. Yeah, but, but if it's your name. It's my mean, yeah. name. Yeah. You know, I don't want anybody else using it. So, uh, And then uh, my, uh, my website that was with an um, old employer went away. Um, and so I, I liked having a website up you know, about me. So I just uh, put, I used it to make DarrenTap.com and just has like, my resume and stuff like that. And now it's also got Darren Daily Bitcoin, which is one of the uh, – uh, faucets that you can get a little bit of 77 Satoshis right now. I might have to change that. I have to go get some. Uh, yeah. yeah, get your 77 Satoshis right there. And uh, But that was fun. That's a fun alliteration, 77 Satoshis. So you got you got mostly, so you got DareTop.com, yeah. and you're at Neo Cash Radio. Neo Cash Radio. That's great. How many yeah. episodes are you guys on now? Oh, we're at 63 or something. Uh, th we're th catching up. A lot of um, the uh, shows kind of disappeared from the Internet when uh, we didn't renew our SoundCloud account. I'm working on making an archive and just putting that up at DarrenTap.com so everybody can listen to all of them. Not that I really would recommend it because it is a timely show. So it, we talk about news stuff. So only if you're doing like research or you want to know about what we thought at a certain time. Yeah, you know, we're a timeless but, show. But uh, you should good. definitely listen to our most recent show because that's about what happened last week. So uh, Yeah, definitely. And then we'll have a new one on Sunday so that comes out Sunday around 5 or 6 and you can come and watch it or listen to it and uh, – Tell us what you think. All well, right. And as all the kids know, I got the desertlinks.com. I've had it for coming up on three years now. And ShireDude.com exists. It redirects to his YouTube channel YouTube. as of now. 
which is it's a good time. In fact, new episodes every week. Like I like you to, have been consistent with new episodes. I like I'll to talk. That. I like to talk about. I like the stuff I do. I like the stuff we collectively do. But when I go around the community, what I see most is people watching that guy's fucking show, like <laughs> all the time. Like, oh, look at a new episode of this and that, and so. Oh, and there's the uh, the checkpoint coming up, the Manchester checkpoint. Yes, man, uh, oh, wait, next, wait, wait, next we're Friday. Our shit right now. Right. <laughs> well, and I was, we got a brand new yeah. Vrebel.com, yeah, don't v, we? <laughs> Vrebel.com is my new website. Uh, I don't really have anything on it yet, and uh, but it's out there. I plan to post to it and put content and all that jazz just because I need something of my own out there yeah, that people can find. find and uh, also, I uh, if you're listening to this the next couple of days, I'm going to be in Vermont for the Freedom and Unity Festival. Go say hi to me out there. Sounds it's like, like a the lot mini of pork fest. And I'll be in L.A., the second week of September for a few days. So if you're going to be in the Orange County area for Liberty and the Rocks. Talking to you, Rob Freebeard. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, hit me up. I have a drink. It'd be a pleasure. So next Friday, this Friday, hopefully there will be another. Well, hopefully not, but there might be another DUI check. No, it's, it's it's following Friday. Friday, Friday. All yeah. right. Not 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 a couple of days from now, but the week from yes. the week from this Friday, right? And we'll be talking and about that more. On it's it's a thing. This it, is what happens here in Manchester, right? Get the Manchester. We have nothing better going help on us Friday night. Block the hell out of that DOI checkpoint. Yeah. yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be live streaming it just like I was going to the last one that was canceled. So yeah. if you go to facebook.com dot slash shire dude, yeah, I, I saw your you video. Get on my you live cut stream. out the best part of that video, <laughs> which was the best part. What are you talking about? Uh, you you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I All right, we'll have to we'll have to have it out in the park. You have to watch the live the show. To find right. out. So if we are a co-host short next time, you know why. <laughs> well, I don't. I can't say who. He, this guy looks like a scrapper, so I can't. I can't tell who's going to win. But anyway, it's been great having you guys here. All right, and thanks for having love, me on. Love, liberty, and peace. Peace, peace. Not rebel. Peace, peace. Just say peace, dude. Come on. Peace. There you go. <laughs>